What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I am Rob with my boy, Jeremy. What's up, guys? What's going on? We are we are a day out from official lockdown relief. <laughs> slightly. Slightly relief, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, anything's better than nothing, man. Like <laughs> I know. I'm dying to go to a, a bar, a patio, just have a dram outside and... Yeah, it's been me. what over a full year since that's happened here in Toronto, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I need I need to drop my children off at somebody's house, go out and just be kid free for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's going drinking, kids, <laughs> and he's probably Ubering at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's uh, tomorrow's the day when patios can open, so uh, I plan on taking full advantage of that. I got a golf game in the morning. Uh, afternoon patio sounds about right. It's supposed to be nice, so looking Absolutely. forward to it. Yeah, Absolutely. That'll be fun. That's, I, that's the one thing that I wish I would have I got into a little bit more because, I mean, what better time than when it's, like, beautiful outside like it is lately? Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, I go, Habs, go Habs in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had to like suspend my social media after the Leafs lost in game seven because I just, it was just meme after meme after meme. And I just was like boiling over with like frustration and anger. <laughs> and like for my own personal mental health, I had to like get off of like social media because all these guys from like the Woodwork, they came like, okay, all these guys from the Woodworks came out and started like bashing the Leafs. I'm like, you're a Detroit Red Wings fan. You're an <laughs> Ottawa Centers fan. Where, where, stop just stop i know i know it's crazy it's absolutely hilarious but, but <laughs> it, it is what it is i went full m m eight mile on myself <laughs> like i just i i, I threw out all the memes i like, just destroyed the leaves for a good like week i'm like now nah, tell me something i don't already know <laughs> you know what i mean like it's man i had to, i think it's just what else are you gonna do like, you gotta just embrace the fact that they suck but they let the habs beat them and, I mean, I don't know. What's worse? The, what, the way the Leafs lost or the way the Jets lost? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, you look at the other teams. You look at Edmonton got swept. You look at the Jets who got swept. I mean, I don't know, man. Montreal, they got some magic going right now. We'll see if it can last. I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm convinced that God is a Montreal Canadiens fan because <laughs> there's no other explanation as to why they win games. They absolutely suck. I <laughs> <laughs> Gary Price is amazing, of course, but other than that, like I really don't understand. But. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They they are good at capitalizing on opportunities, and yeah, you know they, they make it work, I guess. But yeah, no, they're I'm I'm obviously kidding. They're a good counterattacking team, and you know what? A little puck luck, a little bit of uh, Leafs fearing their own shadow, and hey, you come back from a three-one deficit when you got dominated, in, like. Five or seven games, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, the Leafs, I mean, you saw the writing on the wall. We could talk hockey all night, but, I mean, we should get to some whiskey. But you saw the writing on the wall with the Leafs. I right. mean, they're just they're just a sloppy team. They play a lot of, like, pickup uh, pond hockey, you know. It's just a bunch yeah. of guys getting together, and, yeah, they're super talented. But where's the structure? Where's the system? It's, like, you know, they're, no. so, they're so loose and sloppy in their own end with the puck sometimes. It's just you can't win hockey games like that. You could just literally smell the implode. From yeah, it was coming. It was. We've coming. seen it before. We know yeah. it. Yeah, we know what's happening. We know it well. We know it well. And it'll never change. Like re realistically speaking, <laughs> the last thing said about hockey, they could do whatever the hell they want. It's like the Toronto curse. They'll never do better. Right. Yeah. Whatever. It is what it is. Tonight we're talking Glen Alkey, which is a positive thing. Let's so, go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. It's positive Thursday. It's almost Friday. It's hot outside. It's been hot for weeks. Um, and we got a little bit of a promo code to give to you guys, the people. If I wish like I had like memes and little video clips on demand so I could just play Bane saying, give it back to you. <laughs> I mean, the technology does exist. You could I'm do just terrible with it. Like I, I, <laughs> I'm in my corner just constantly doing that. Like, this is what I want to happen. Read my mind and do it as soon as I say it because that's, yeah. yeah. I need uh, Al's brother. Al's <laughs> brother from TSN. Um, so, promo code is Sixer Crew. 
Um, the link is above. I put it in the chat. I will put it again. But um, right now, you can't pull the trigger on this. So don't like go looking for it right this minute. It's going to take a few days. Um, I think Mark's going to set up, Liquor Lodge is going to set up a pre-order, I believe, because at the moment, they the bottles haven't dropped in Alberta yet. They drop on the 28th of June. So we're a few days out, obviously, um, but it's going to happen, and you guys are going to get a promo code to Liquor Lodge to buy it there. All right. Um, so here's the, the link if you need it, and then i also give you the promo code, which is Sixer Crew, and it's for 15.15% off. All right, 15% off, which I think is a pretty good deal. And I think they're going to come in. I can't remember what he said they're going to come in at, uh, so don't quote me on anything. Um, I just read the emails now. Um, I've been busy all day. I've been writing report cards and stuff like that, so I actually wasn't able to call Mark, which – he had asked that I do, but I just didn't have the time all day. Um, it's report card season, so I don't have a lot of time for much. But that's the promo code. That's the link. The bottles don't drop until June 28th. I will remind you guys. I will send a, a friendly reminder um, on like closer to the date or whenever Mark has the pre-sale up. And then that will be on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and all my social media. Um, it's, I don't know if it's Canadians only, um, you'll have to ask or email liquor lodge, uh, Claire. Okay. We have a lot of people in the chat. We have some, some of our friends already here. A couple of, uh, Habs fans chirping us already, which is their game. We deserve the chirp. <laughs> um, we got, uh, BMO, Paul M, Gene is in the house. We got, uh, Jean-Philippe in the house. We got go Habs, Claire the third. Daryl's in the house. Richie Z, Dram Dude, Sasha, what's going on? Uh, Rich, I said Richie Z. Cars and Cubes, what's going on, buddy? Um, and I think I got most people that commented anyway. Uh, Mamuka, I don't know if I butchered that, but I apologize if I did. Renee, how are you? And Malt Muser's in the house. What's going on, buddy? And Mamuka just dropped a super chat. Thank you so much, my friend. He says. I'm waiting uh, when new Glenalki wine finish releases show up in U.S. I really have a soft spot for this distillery. Funny you mention that. This is last year's release. Uh, this is a 2020 release. This is the Moscatel wood finish 11-year-old. I have that here poured out. I'm gonna actually, uh, I'll probably give it a quick little review for you guys, actually, because um, I have the 15-year-old here, which is from... 2020 as well this is the the newer edition really good stuff um jeremy and i reviewed this as well as the 12 year old on a podcast which podcast was it? that was the um the legend the uh, legendary distiller, right the master yeah the legendary master distiller podcast uh yeah that's what i got in my glass right now a little uh 15 year old plus the uh, batch five of the 10 year old cast strength so yeah really good stuff and uh yeah if you're getting 15 percent off that 15 year old it's definitely a good buy for sure yeah this one i i let it sit for a very long time i opened it i let it sit and this is i gotta say this is probably the first glen Alki that i'm not a huge fan of it's still good it's 48 percent. it's a bit hot at 48 percent, which is weird for glen Alki. that rarely ever happens the flavors are all there but it's just a bit hot <clears throat> Whose cat's in heat? Yeah, right. My cat just, he's well fed. He's got everything he needs. He just needs attention. He's an attention whore. <laughs> <laughs> and when I turn the camera on, he just starts meowing, you know. Right on. He's okay now, I think. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm not sure if Mark will join us in the chat today. He might. <clears throat> but perhaps he'll be able to. Um, further explain how it's going to run down. Um, again, we're going live today and the intention, I think we all thought that uh, the bottles were dropping within the next couple of days and then we would be able to give you guys the promo code. You guys can order how much you want and then um, Mark would get them in and ship them out. But I don't know exactly if it's going to work that way. 
it might still, he might, you guys might be able to still pre-order it. And then if the bottles, like he can order as much as the pre-orders show him that he needs. And then after that, <clears throat> you know, we just got to play the waiting game. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Peter White in the house. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Um, so have you, I remember you liked the 12 better than the 15. Have you changed your yeah. stance on that? Like, how are you feeling about them now that they've opened up a little bit more? Um, yeah, I would still say that I prefer the 12 year old. I think the complexity on the 12 is a little bit more, uh, the 15, I would say is very like heavily sherried. And if you love that, like, uh, that thick, uh, sherry note, then the 15 is perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that. The 15 reminds me of like an old Glendronic 18. Yeah. Like, like an older, like uh, 2015 Glendronic 18, 18 kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I don't, I'm not sure what the cask maturation. Do you know what they use in both of them? So there's, this one is PX and Oloroso. And I don't think that there's any uh, new oak casks in this one, but the 12 has. i had the new oak. It's got the new oak as well. And I think it has a little bit of ex bourbon as well. <clears throat> yeah, so I think the layers in the 12 a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, both delicious. This 15 is great. It's like, it's every, it's the, it's the definition sherry whiskey. I mean, if you like that Glendronic profile, you like the, um, let's say Abelure profile, maybe, maybe yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, you like that kind of stuff. I think this is perfect for you. Yeah, I mean, it's so, like, if you're coming from our roots, this is like, this was our five years ago, like dream. You know what I mean? Like this 15 year old. Cause it was like, yeah. we love those Sherry bombs. You know what I mean? And they came from McAllen fans, like the 18 year old and that sort of thing. So this is right up there with that stuff. I would, I would there's say. There's like, there's like that phase that you go through and you, then you get that Sherry whiskeys and you're just like, wow, this is so good. Um, I think a lot of bourbon drinkers go from bourbon to Sherry scotch. I think it's a transition that they make. Mm -hmm. uh, the sweetness seems like it's it's comparable you know like the the mm -hmm. level if you're rating it out of 10 or something the sweetness level is maybe comparable with sh sherry bomb whiskeys and and you know uh, sweet sweet corn mash bourbons and uh, yeah we definitely went through a sherry phase we were loving the sherry and then you know we back it out and go to some ex bourbon casks and then back and forth and yeah, there was a there was a small period of time where I was like, yeah, I, I can't do any sherry cast stuff for a little while here. Like, I need to take a break. I need to regroup. I need to like. So for a while, I was just doing like cast giant peated stuff, um, and then I got back on the sherry. Mm -hmm. But it took like you know you got you go through ebbs and flows in in the whiskey game. So um, someone, I think it was uh, our boy uh, Mark Saliba. Who said I think you've gone peat blind because I was right. that the 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 Freud, uh sherry oak is not that peated. It's like very lightly peated. And he's like a, a lightly peated Lafroig. That's in like you must have gone peat blind. Like. You do. I think you do go a little bit peat blind, right? Like yeah. I remember the first time I ever had Lafroig, uh quarter cask, and I'm just like insane amount of peat, and then go back to it now. I'm like this is almost like nothing. Yeah. So a couple more hellos. We got uh, Chris Ruth in the house. What's going on, buddy? Uh, Richard is in the house. Our boy Richard is saying shopping at Costco for cheap whiskey. Hmm. But not. <laughs> P Boss is in the house. Uh, Pollard uh, Curry is saying good vibes, Rob and Jeremy. Love your videos. Keep up the good job. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, man. And BMO, we've said hello earlier. Uh, Cars and Cubes is saying 15 is great, but I can dig the 12 way more has lots going on. Yeah. I, I think that's the general consensus. Although Billy Walker, like his baby apparently is the 15. So hmm. uh, I wonder what, I think he's like a, a bit of a Sherry head and that makes sense, right? Like you look at the way Glenn, he developed Glendronic, the way he's going, the direction he's going with Glen Alki, you could tell he's a big Sherry guy, right? What's up Indian guy. What's going on, buddy? Um, as far as this one, I think honestly, I'm not a. I liked some of the Billy Walker wine finish casks uh, that he did with 
Ben Riek and, and maybe one or and less from Glenn John. Like I like their Sherry stuff a lot better. I think that's the same thing with Glenn Alki so far. I'm not a big fan of this Moscatel. I'd probably only give it like an 82, 83. Hmm. Do you have a Glen Alki port? Uh, port? Yes. Yeah, the ports are good. The ports are good. What's that? Is that 11 or 14? I forget how old that was. It was a tw 12. Oh, no, no, you're right. It was a 10, the 10 port, and then there was an 11 port that was made this last year. Sorry. So the 10 okay. port that I had was actually really good. I remember really, like, really. You tried that one as well, I think. Yeah, I remember it being pretty good. That one was really good. I, I have a hard time like putting port and sherry in the same category as wine because I feel like they're almost like two different beasts. Like port and sherry are fortified. They have like that more robust sweetness and all that other stuff. Whereas the wines I find like kind of like they don't have the same impact on a, on a whiskey. Like they, they kind of take a back seat to the whiskey, whereas sherry like, you know, is in the driver's seat or at least in the front seat on the passenger side. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, there was some really good port cask stuff. Um, you know what I didn't like was that Glendronic peated port. That one was awesome. like that was like terrible actually. That I hated that whiskey. You remember that one? Not the peated it. port from Glendronic. Yeah, they do Glendronic. I have yet to try a good port cask Glendronic. I had the fifteen or sorry the 14, 14 or fifteen fourteen I think fourteen eighteen, and then that peated port and they were all junk like they were yeah. all a waste of money the towny port at 18 i was like i had such high expectations for it and it just was not good i wonder what the billy walker process was with that um yeah just didn't translate i don't know if this the, the distillate just doesn't work with port or just bad port pipes or what they had going on there i think honestly like i think when if you go back and it, like, if you go back to some of the Glendronics, it, if you take away that sherry, those high quality sherry casts that they were using when Billy Walker was there, you're going to notice that that, that distillate on its own is like not very good. It's like you, you cannot hold it up to like some other companies that go bourbon cask. It would not like last, like it would, it would be the last mm -hmm. place on every single blind tasting because it has this like vegetal kind of note that is disguised very well by sherry but when you don't have that sherry like overpowering that note it's it's out of whack like it right. just goes a little crazy yeah that's what i've noticed anyway that's my two cents that's bro science right there right <laughs> and then all the, also them trying to do peated stuff it just it just didn't work either yeah yeah I, I, some people just got to stick to what they're good at i think yeah no doubt that's it but uh yeah the the moscatel is decent I, I i would definitely not buy it again i love the abv of their wine cast they always go about 48 percent the 10 year old port was a banger for mm -hmm. sure but this yeah. is just like, 82 83 maybe like you drop a, a couple of drops of water in there you'll get it up to like an 85 but that's about it um but i love this 15 year this 15 cherry yeah. Um, do you know if Mark's getting in 2020 uh, 15 year olds or maybe the new 2021 stuff? I don't know if they made a 2021. Hmm. That's a good question. I know it's like the, the super dark 12 and the super dark 15. So we were lucky because um, a friend got this, like one store in Alberta for whatever reason got this, got the 15 and the 12. And they were the only ones to get it and they got it like three months, two or three months ago. And it's the 2020. So I'm assuming that the one that's coming is the 2020 as well. Right. I, think, I think they just got lucky and a couple boxes were sent early. And for whatever reason, that store just saw it and grabbed it. Nice. Um, but yeah. So apparently a lot of Glendronic fit or sorry, Glen 15 is coming to Alberta. Like we're talking, like 200 cases or something like that, 120 cases, 150 cases, something like that. Anyway, right. like a good amount, a good amount that's going to like definitely, uh, you know, be around for a bit, I would think. I don't think that's going to sell out that fast. I wonder if the LCBO has anything coming in. I mean, if they do, I'm sure it will be like next year, but. I wonder. 
I don't know. The LCBO does really well with Lafroic. They do really well with all Diageo products. But these smaller, like, you know, let like not non conglomerate type whiskeys or scotch companies, they just they they don't bring them in. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, they do have one Glen Alkey on the shelves right now. I forget which one it is. I think they had the um, the PX, the twelve year old PX. Okay. Yeah, they had it for a while. I, I'm not sure if it's still there, but uh, BMO is saying 200 cases should last about a week. Hmm. I, I wonder. Like you're talking about 1,200 bottles, right? So I don't know. Let's see. That's a lot of bottles in Alberta. I'm sure they'll sell pretty quick. Um, Pete, the word is out on Glenalkey for sure. Yeah. Point. I think a lot of people were waiting for this one too because the last 15-year-old didn't perform as well and didn't review as well as this 15-year-old. Mm. So there's been two batches of the 15 so far. This one has been reviewed a lot better than the previous one. Yeah. Um, same with the 12th. The, 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 new, um, the new 12 just outperformed by like a long shot in reviews. So what's Swami saying over here? Two wheels down is saying, Jesus, Jeremy, how much white light do you need? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like I mean, this camera sucks with what I have going on right now. But I had compared, a to, compared to Italian Rob, yeah, I look like freaking powder from that movie. <laughs> I actually don't have a light on it. I have the, <laughs> the regular light on. Otherwise, like, I started the live and I'm like, damn forgot my uh my studio <laughs> light but whatever it was too late by then and i'm not gonna get up so yeah i'm just using like a cheap webcam right now i do have a new camera that i will need some kind of adaption to make it a webcam but uh yeah this light is just <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's all good dude um Swami, uh, Swami was uh, someone I had to unfollow because he kept sending me uh, Toronto Maple Leafs memes. I'm like, dude, I have to unfollow you. I can't stand it. I'm sorry. Bye. See you. See you next season. See you next. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would unfollow him for other reasons too, but that was the main reason. <laughs> you know, it, it kills me because it doesn't matter what team you like if you live in canada you're bashing the, the closest toronto fan that you know <laughs> <laughs> i know right it doesn't matter it does not matter <laughs> they just they love bashing the toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, yeah so there's a whole slew of new wine casks have you have you uh checked that out at all i think a ro there's a roja cask there's a um you talking about uh glen Alkey? yeah glen Alkey. So no. red, red, red breast over here is saying there's a Soterns cask. There's a Grata Mako cask, uh, Sherry butt in two or three months. He's looking forward to all of them, but I think there's also a Roja as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know what? I'd, lo I'd love to see Glen Alki put out like one of those little taster packs, you know, like a hundred ML sample pack of like, three to five different ones. Cause it's like, it's too much, man. You got like way too much stuff going on right now. I, I almost want them to like, just stop like going crazy with all these extra types of like, he's making all these things and they're all like limited. So everybody's like going crazy cause they're somewhat collectible, I guess. Um, but I'm sticking to my 10 year old cast ring and I'm mm -hmm. sticking to, you know, I'll buy the standards like 12 to 15, the the new A team looks really good. The new A team is like almost this dark, um, which is like ten shades darker than the first A team. Someone so, mentioned in the chat that they got the new A team and it's super super dark. Yeah, I wonder how it tastes. Like I, I'm curious. Obviously, like they're playing they're playing the market. They're, they're playing to our tater eyes because <laughs> they are. They, they are because I mean Springbank's doing it too. Uh, but Glenn Alecky started, I think, and like they just everything's got to be dark because they know if it's not if it says natural color and it's this dark, we're just take my money. Like it, it, we will not, we'll buy it blind. We will not taste it. We'll just buy it. Yeah, I think that 
we kind of need to pump our brakes a bit on that. I mean, what they're doing at Glen Allocky is they're they're recasking all their old uh, inventory into these sherry casks. Like they've invested a lot in the sherry casks, and then their sherry casks have been good. Um, but it's just you know they're just finishing all this old stuff. Some of it's turning out. I don't know if all of it's going to. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's a it's a touchy process, and it's it's kind of like a workaround. Um, I mean, they've gotten obviously good casks, and there's no doubt about it. But yeah. that process, like other distilleries, do that, and it doesn't turn out that good at all. Well, we have to get together because uh, Phil from uh, Miss Whiskey Mystery Whiskey Whiskey Mystery. I always mess that up. Yeah, Whiskey Mystery. Whiskey Mystery. He sent us samples. Yours got seized. No, but, it didn't get seized. No? No. What happened was is that your sample got delivered to you under my name, and yeah. my sample was under your name, I guess, and got sent back to the post office, undeliverable, and then it went back. I think it's, they got they just returned it to sender. Uh, yeah. Either way, we'll share the one that I have, but it's the – Springbank 10 local barley, like it's a sample. It's just a sample. It's a sample. Thank you very much, Phil. That's awesome that you sent that. But um, it's a sample of the 10. We, we were hoping to hunt down a bottle, but that's another example of a bottle that people are going nuts for because of the color of it. But who knows if, like, most people don't even know if it's any good. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a few people that have tried it by now. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see. It's the thing about all these, like, releases and. In- some, some distilleries just it's like expand too much and there's like too much. The range is just too vast. Mm-hmm. You can't keep up with it all. So you really have to rely on a review to see if it's worthwhile a purchase or not. Cause otherwise you're just, you're buying like what, 20 bottles a year from a distillery. And it's just, you yeah, can't do it all. You can't do that. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. Like as much as you want to support a distillery, you really, you're a big fan, especially as a whiskey reviewer, like who the hell is going to watch a channel that like just, reviews the same like you know the same brand all the time i mean aside from the bourbon channels that like you know post ecb he every day but <laughs> <laughs> that's the key to success rob don't you know that <laughs> 30 ecbp reviews <laughs> a year <laughs> or nothing <laughs> that's right review each one 10 times that's what you gotta do <laughs> it, it's a good whiskey but i just i mean like it, how do you keep track? Like it's so many ECVPs. Right. Um, but yeah, no, exactly. Like that's my point, right? Like I think Scotch guys are a little bit more about the, like diversity. They want to know, you know, what the whole spectrum looks like as opposed to, you know, just one brand. So if we were to just exclusively do Glen Alkey and like two other Sherry Bomb comp- like companies that are known for Sherry Bombs, Who's gonna watch our channel? Maybe like- that's true. I mean, you could get away with it if you did a big brand, like if you did all McAllen stuff. You'd probably get a lot of views. Um, yeah, on our bag and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, even then, it would be tough. Like you get a lot of views on your on your videos, but would you actually have a lot of subscribers? That's like that's the thing. I, I wonder. Yeah, I know. Like. I don't know. I do you think McAllen fans, like guys that are hardcore McAllen fans, are actually like watching reviews? Uh, mm, no. I think it's like the the person, people that watch McAllen reviews are someone that's looking to purchase McAllen. I think that hardcore McAllen guys probably drink way more than what people are reviewing, right? That, and I think that like they, they just they they buy they buy it for prestige right like it's it's a yeah prestige. if you're if you're a hardcore mccallan guy you probably have a big wallet because a lot of their stuff is super expensive so that's right yeah i mean they're they're buying this stuff and they probably haven't tasted half the stuff that like is out there it's just that that's why they're, they're like you know there's a reason why that mccallan was sponsored by or sorry suits the tv show suits was sponsored by mccallan right because that's the kind of person that they want buying their whiskey for sure, for okay. sure. So, Swami's, so, mean, uh, I think, starting some controversy in the chat over here. He's saying, what? No, that's not true. It was it, <laughs> Swami. What, Swami? Never, Swami. Um, actually, I got this today. This arrived. Uh, have you seen this yet? 
Uh, the off Nick Offerman stuff. Yeah, the, the new one. This is the um, ooh, mm. that way. The Guinness. Yeah, I'm gonna try this soon. I'm, I'm sure try. it's trash. <laughs> you think so? I don't know, man. I think Guinness barrel does that translate well? Maybe with the smoke, it might be okay. But honestly, I I do not have high hopes for that bottle at all. It smell. I've all, I've opened it and smelled it. It smells incredible. It smells incredible. It smells I love to. I would love to be uh, wrong about them. It it smells more peated than usual. It almost smells like um, eight year old peated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the eight year old's great. I love the eight year old. I mean, I love Nick Offerman. Him on Parks and Rec was was great. But have you had a bad log of woolen though? Have you really like? Have you ever had a bad log of woolen? The Game of Thrones one wasn't the best. It was still good though. It was still like it was still good, but it wasn't like it wasn't as good as the the eight year old or the obviously the sixteen's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. I'll I'll um I'll give that one too. But I mean, I will. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's got to be good. <laughs> I feel like Joey when I'm opening up this. Like, you ever watch that episode of Friends where? He's eating Rachel's uh, parfait that has like minced meat and like all kinds of dessert ingredients in it. He's like, "What's there not to like?" That's true. Guinness, yeah. good. Were you were you were you ever a Guinness fan though? Like, did you do you like drinking Guinness? I do like I like stouts, man. I, I like stouts, and yeah. I feel like Guinness is probably like a bastardized like stout. Like, it's kind of like um, a non stout guy drinker, stout, you know. It's like the McAllen yeah. of stouts, but um, I like it. It's 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 just good. It's what everybody hates to hear. It's smooth, you know. <laughs> yeah, see, I've never been like a dark beer drinker. Like I drink all the hipster stuff. I drink IPAs and APAs and pale ales and stuff like that. But yeah. dark beer is like you know I I do appreciate them, but I I like I would drink half a glass, you know, and that's it. That's that's my tolerance yeah. for for dark beers. Dark beers are hard because, like, as good as they're tasting, they have a like half a can shelf life, and then that's it. Like, you can't you can't go beyond that half can because they're just so filling. It's like that's eating. true. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't I don't like drinking a lot of it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, watch Friends. Now I have to t question your taste and everything. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, I was never a big Friends fan. I, I did watch it, but. Yeah, I watched it. I wa I, I'm trying to remember how old I was when that show was, like, running. I was, like, I don't know. I used to watch it with, like, my parents. I was young. I was, like, in elementary school. Yeah. So. I recently rewatched Seinfeld, and, like, I had watched every single Seinfeld multiple, multiple times, but I hadn't seen any of it for, like, I don't know, five or six or eight years or something. And then I rewatched it from start to finish. It's it's the best sitcom of all time, without a doubt, in my opinion. You can't beat Seinfeld. It's just perfectly written, perfectly executed show. Cheech is saying, What's up, bro? You know who um you know who messaged on one of my videos recently? Um I think I posted on Instagram actually. The um I miss these guys. South Florida Pete lovers. Oh yeah? Yeah. Are they out of prison? <laughs> <laughs> That's the running joke. I wonder if they were ever actually in prison. But Well, every time they take a leave of absence, they come back and we're like, yeah, sorry, we were uh, incarcerated for a bit. <laughs> we're back at it now. But uh, they've been MIA for a very long time again, right? Yeah, they're the best. Those guys are the best. They are the best, yeah. I love those guys. South Florida Pete lovers. I remember when they were doing a review and I forget the one brother's name, but he, like, he was like sitting on his like Glock and he like had to pull it out and was like, Oh man. And I remember commenting. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's amateur stuff. Never, never have your gun on you when you're reviewing a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are awesome, man. Yeah. They're Those great. The definition of giving like zero Fs ever. Like they yeah. just, they they did their thing and they were hilarious and you either like you either watched or you didn't but they reviewed some awesome stuff man 
Yeah, I remember watching them from the very start. Um, they were pulling out, you know, old McAllen's and yeah, the crazy it's, stuff like old Japanese whiskey. Like they were reviewing Japanese whiskey before it was popular, and you know yeah. they were buying stuff. They were buying Yamazaki 18s for like a hundred bucks, and was like, I remember that video exactly. He's like, yeah. he pulls out the Yamazaki 18. Yeah, we what do we pay? A hundred and twenty bucks for this, it's right? Like, yeah. Can you imagine? Can you like if you had a time machine and can go back and buy cases of Yamazaki? 18 year old for 120 bucks American. Yeah. Like, wow. That's the thing though. You never think of it. Cause that, that stuff's on the shelf and it's always on the shelf. And then one day it's not. And you're like, whoops, so they should have bought a bunch of them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a few bottles that taught us that lesson. Right. The Callan edition one. For Callan example. edition one. Yeah. Yeah. Scotch comic is saying, Rob, uh, thought you would still be mourning over the Leafs loss. I'm bring, I'm binging got for the third time. You, now you're gotten for punishment. You must be a Leaf fan. You're binging <laughs> got after watching that finale. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> so much build up to such disappointment. <laughs> that is, ex you, that is the definition. What being a got fan is the definition of actually, you know what? Thank God for God, because now everybody knows what Leaf fans feel like every single season. <laughs> the finale <laughs> is never good. <laughs> it's just terrible finale. I mean, you're into it. It's awesome. You watch every game, and then boom. It has the potential to be the best show of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just get beat down by, like, I don't know, just terrible writing or players. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, no attention to detail, sloppiness, and laziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's uh, it. Goes it honestly? They mirror this season mirrored the got entire like five seven or seven seasons, whatever it was. Like started off with a bang. All the big names were like performing at like. If Oscars like were awarded to HBO stars, then you know, yeah. but then they all just flop at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not the it's not the actor's fault, it's the writer's fault. I remember watching an interview with um, Emily Clark or Amelia Clark, whatever her name is, um, and she was mortified at what she had to do for the last season, but she couldn't say it. Yeah. And like you could just tell, she was just like, "What the hell did they make me have to do?" Like I built up this character, became like this woman icon, and then literally like just <laughs> made her batshit crazy in the last five episodes. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. I remember an uh, interview with Peter Dinklage, and he was like, "What? What is this last season? This is the dumbest thing ever." Terrible. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know though. why, like. They should have consulted somebody. Like, I, there's no way. I, I guarantee you, George R. R. Martin is gonna like write the last book and just stick it to them so hard because it's gonna be completely different than what they did. That's my guess. He's not gonna do at all what they did if he ever gets around to it. Yeah, if he doesn't die before he finishes writing, he's probably he's probably been on a beach with like prostitutes for the last five years straight. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not wrong. No, you're definitely not. Wrong. You're definitely not wrong. Okay, so we are. Where are we? I, I can't tell how long we've been on for because I lost track of time here. We've been on for about forty-five minutes, about forty minutes, and um, I'm going to give away a couple samples because tonight was supposed to be a promo code for Glenallocky fifteen, and I don't know if it's actually available yet because I didn't get a chance to call the store owner. Um, had a busy day and there was a last minute change of plan. Uh, the bottles will be released on June 28th. I'm not sure if he's going to do a pre-order. I would assume that he does, um, but we'll see. But either way, that link that I gave you, the promo code that I gave you, Sixer Crew, uh, I'm going to type it in one more time, will be relevant. I'm going to give away some samples tonight because I also have to apologize to my Patreons who uh, I did not get their samples out. They're packed. They're ready to go. I did not get them out, so I might as well just do it all in one shot this weekend. Um, thanks, Bimo. <laughs> he, he was on that. I'm going to just share his name there. 
And there you go. That's the promo code on Liquor Lodge. Oh, he just um, – Renee just ordered with the promo code. So I guess it's working. I guess it's firing at all cylinders. I mm -hmm. bet you, you'll get some sort of email suggesting that it, it, that's like a pre-order, I would assume. I don't know for sure. Don't mark my words. Um, but I'm sure Mark will have it all sorted out. They are very good at Liquor Lodge, so uh, they know what they're doing. Um, that's the promo code right there on the screen that BMO was so kind to type out for us. Guys, we got one. What was uh, number one? Was um, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm gonna go back and read it. Number one for the sample giveaway was Mama Mamu Mamuka 1977. So what are you doing? You're doing a super chat equals a uh, entry into the giveaway. Yeah. Okay. Super chat equals entry into the giveaway. Um, and I'm going to give away two samples. Nice. Anything you see here, including the Offerman 11-year-old uh, Lagavulin, some rums, um, a Michter's Barrel Proof, a Valentin Mallet uh, rum that's excellent in my opinion. What did you think about the Craigmore 20? We're going to talk about this in our next um, podcast. You know what? I was I poured a little of this tonight. Um, I think it's great. I was sipping it the other night. I cracked it. Um, I was smoking a cigar. I was smoking a Cohiba, and it paired super well with this. Um, this reminds me a little bit, just a touch of like the vanilla and the honey notes in here. Kind of similar to what you get like in a Balvini twenty five year old single cask. It was kind of like brought that comparison to my mind, and also. It kind of tastes like an unpeated talisker too. So really interesting notes. Um, this is the oldest bottle that they've released. I think official bottle, 20 years old from Craig and Moore. Never a fan of the 13. I thought it was just okay. I never would ever buy it. Um, but this at cast strength, really good stuff. Really impressed with it. Like it a lot. Yeah. So we got a couple of super chats already. We got BMO dropping five bucks. He's saying, yeah, boys. We got Richie Z dropping a super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, thank you so much, BMO, as well. Uh, Richie Z saying, cheers, Rob and Jeremy. Great live, as always. Thanks, guys. Um, appreciate it. So we got three in the – do you have a pen or something handy? Because I just realized my phone is uh, the camera for this. You know, I can, I can record it after, and I'll type it in the chat. We could do it. Can, yeah, I can figure it out. Let me bring it open here. M1977, I'm going to call him, uh, is number one. BMO is number two. And Richie Z is number three. This nose is really nice. This uh, Lagavulin. Super sweet on the nose. That, that's what I've noticed that like whenever a whiskey is aged in a beer cask, it heightens the sweetness for some reason. Um, all right, so we got Richie Z. Richie Z is number three, BMO number two, and M1977 is number one. M1977? Yeah. Mamuk or Mamuk. Mama, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he can help us out with the pronunciation on that. Okay. Forty six percent too. You don't get too many Lagavulins that are forty six percent. Um yeah, you do. Well the the eight is forty eight. Yeah. The the twelve is cash strength, and then the sixteen is forty three. The two sixteens, the right. the distillers edition and the regular edition. Right. It's nice, I like it. It's good. Eh? It's not a disappointment. It's not. It's not. Um, you, if you don't like Guinness, you'll never know that Guinness is in this. Yeah, I'm sure. It, like, I mean, what percentage of barrels is a Guinness? Right. I'm sure it's mostly what ex bourbon with some Guinness stuff. Actually, Richie, Richie's saying if shipping to the U.S. is an issue, no worries. 
it's actually a lot easier for us to ship to you than it is for you guys to ship to us. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah shipping from here to the US is no problem. We do it all the time. Yeah. So I released a video today, the Glenallachy 10 year old. I did the batch three, four, and five blind. I started watching that and then my kids were going ape shit in the background. So I, I shut it off and didn't get back to it. Got to finish that up later. Really had to like Nick Pitt as far as like tasting notes and stuff. Cause they're all, they're all so good. And they're all really close in profile. Um, but uh, it wasn't that hard of a decision to pick which one I liked the best. It seemed like it was came really easy to me. Um, and there was consensus. I did it over two different days and uh, picked the exact same order both days. Yeah. Um, which was great. Um, but yeah, really good stuff. Can't say enough good things about the 10 year old. Yeah. So big league bourbon. That's is, I'm assuming that's a new channel or another channel. What's up, big league bourbon? Yeah, I haven't checked you out yet. I may well, uh, get a little subscribe. Big yeah, league yeah. bourbon. Yeah, but I have. Uh, I like this, man. I, I'm definitely so peat jaded these days. Like it's just it's all about the peat, man. My go-to whiskeys are always peat whiskeys right now. Is that right? Yeah, you're on the peat train. You know what? I'm going camping end of the month. I'm only going to bring peated scotch with me. Mm. I'm going all peated scotch. Maybe I'll do a little video review out there and see what uh, peated scotch I like the most around, you know, campfire out in the elements, camping. Big League, hit the subscribe. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Um, I'm going to have a look at your channel in a little bit. Mark LeBlanc, the man himself is in the chat. What's going on, man? Um, so I shared the link, I shared the promo code and I did let them know that the bottles won't be dropping until June 29th. Uh, I almost feel like we should invite Mark to the chat tonight to just like have his input and like just clarify everything for us. So, um, Mark, I actually saw your emails really late tonight because, um, as Jeremy can attest, I had some trouble earlier on. So it was, uh, it was a rough day. <laughs> the four cards are done, though. Thank God. Lito just jumped in with a super chat. A bit late. Just finished watching Jeremy's Glen Alki 3, 4, and 5 comparison. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Lito. Cheers, man. Thanks for the super chat. And uh, I got to check that video out. I'm really excited, actually, to watch it. I think I got a spoiler already, but I'm, I'm curious to see how it played out. I honestly, I would love to do that that blind as well because I when I drink that 20, that um, the newer one, I feel like it's, it's, uh, like it drinks so much older than it actually is. Yeah. And I think I made that point about batch five. Um, maybe it's the Roja casts in there. That's cause I got like a, like a leathery kind of note and I'm getting it right now. Can I get that old, like kind of dank style sherry cast that, uh, you get with older scotches, older sherry. Right on. You know, Bruce just jumped in with the super chat. Thanks so much, buddy. Um, Jeremy, you got these guys down. Uh, yeah, I'll put Neil in there. So Lito and Neil. All right. Hopefully we can, um, I'm giving away two samples anyway. Uh, so anything you guys choose, uh, two winners, two samples, <coughs> uh, or one sample each, I guess. Um, but then again, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that for now and then we'll, we, we can negotiate later. Um, but yeah. Anything you want on this table or behind me is up for grabs. Okay. Uh, as far as my Patreons go, uh, in my Sixer Crew uh, Mystery Drams Club, I apologize. I did not get those drams out until 
I'll be getting them out this weekend for sure. They're already packed. They're ready to go. I just had report cards this week and a half. So it kind of, it's like our tax season, I guess you can say. <laughs> it gets pretty crazy for teachers mm -hmm. this time of year. Um, but it's done now, so those will be out this weekend. Are you uh, happy or sad that you don't get to go back in classrooms for the rest of the year? I think it was like probably a blessing just because the way it played out, like I really want to be back in the class in September. Mm -hmm. So whatever it takes to get to that, right? what we need to do. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do online teaching. I, I will do it if I have to, obviously, and I'll do it the, to the best of my ability, but it just, I don't think it works very well for the kids. Like I don't, I don't think they're learning enough. I don't think they have the same experience. Yeah. Like the social, the, the emotional, the, like all of it, it's just like, it's different. Yeah. I think that a lot of people wanted to get back in class, like kids I'm sure did. And, but for the last, like, it was about what, three weeks or four weeks. That's the probably thing, better man. just to call it and start up fresh in September. I think so. Uh, I think that's, what's going to keep the numbers down in Ontario. Like if you go by like, the numbers and assume that there's no fiddling around with anything. Um, the numbers were super low August of 2020. They started slowly, slowly climbing September, October, November, climbing, 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 climbing till uh, December when we went out for Christmas break. Right. Started to drop a little bit. We got back in February and then they skyrocketed again till March when we left or sorry, till April when we left again. So right. it's pretty much, a direct correlation based on the numbers if you look at like analytics uh, so they can say all they want that it, it wasn't spreading in schools but it wasn't the kids that were getting sick it was the kids that were passing it to their parents their sure. grandparents or this or that whatever right? sure. yeah that's my assumption though. That's, that's again bro science not not real science <laughs> <laughs> the gabagool science <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> it's the only science that matters, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you sounded like you were straight out of the Sopranos right there. <laughs> poor, poor pronunciation. I don't think anyone's mistaking me for any Soprano ever. Well, they all, they all like have, despite being supposedly Italian, they all had the worst pronunciation of all time. <laughs> like, it was oh, really? Like, yeah. Is that a thing? Okay. I didn't know. Yeah. It was like disgraceful to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Richie Z just shared Big League's uh, YouTube channel right there. YouTube.com slash C slash Big League Bourbon. There you go. You yeah, I think you were saying that they uh, talked bourbon and baseball. So if you're an MLB fan, check it out, which I am. So, yeah. Uh, in Touch Mortgage is in, is in the house. He's saying, he's saying that he's joking really late. Maybe, I don't know what he meant by that, but I think he was just meaning he's really late like to the party over here. Um, good odds tonight. What do we got? Six people or seven, five people or six people? So, so far in the super chat, we got five names. Five names. Yeah. Okay. So in exactly five minutes, we will call it. And then I will do like a random generator and pick two names. Um, Vladdy probably likes Glen Alki, according to Mark. Man, Vladdy, wow, what a season so far. Killing it. That's the that's funny though, because everybody hates the Toronto Maple Leafs, but it doesn't matter where you are in Canada, you probably like the Toronto Blue Jays. Right? That's true. I mean, there might be some people out in uh BC that like Seattle just because of the proximity, but yeah. yeah I can see since that. the uh since the expos went to Washington, it's it's one one trick pony in Canada for baseball right now. And the Jays have had good teams. Like, you can't really not like their teams in the last – well, I mean, I don't know, since they won this World Series back in the 90s. But recently, in, like, the Roy Holiday era, I guess, T 
teams since then. It's been pretty pretty good. Yeah. Competitive in a tough division. Well, a lot of people think they're going to do really well. Actually, I put money on, on the Jays to win the whole thing this year. I know that's not a good bet, but it was not a lot of money. Was- hey, man, if they can get a little bullpen, you know, stabilization, you know, some of their pitchers come back from injury, uh, sharp that bullpen a bit, and they had a chance. I mean, they got the offense for sure. Yeah, they just need the pitching. Yeah. Um, Andrew jumped in and said, add me in. Thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate it. And then <laughs> Intouch Mortgages, my boy, Anthony jumped in as well so you got andrew you see his name there and then uh in touch mortgages solutions um thank you very much buddy i appreciate it so uh we're giving away two samples and the draw will be done at i think it was i said five minutes from like well it was 53 40 something so let's say 58 40 something Um, so Mark, I don't know if you can write it down really quickly in the chat. Are, are the bottles being pre-sold now and then, and then they'll be shipped out as of the 28th, 29th, that, that sort of thing. How's that going to work? Maybe you can just type it really quickly in the chat for us and I'll share it on the screen. Oh, and Mark, these these bad boys arrived today. So happy about this. Really like it, actually. Good stuff. You're gonna like this, Jeremy. You, you you'll get a hint of like that that uh, Guinness flavor, but nothing off putting. Well, I I would love to love it. Um, I tried the first Nick Offerman and thought it was just okay. I wasn't blown away by it by any means. Um, that was just a bourbon cask, right? Yeah, I still prefer the eight-year-old to it. Um, yeah, yeah. The the eight-year-old is an amazing whiskey. It's yeah. like, for me, it's like one of my favorite lager ones, if not my favorite. Pre-sold now, shipped ASAP after arrival. So, guys, remember, the bottles drop June 28th. So, if you're buying it now, just know that that bottle will not be shipped out to you until... June 28th or later, but it might, I don't know if it might come sooner. It's possible. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark saying Lagavulin Offerman was a good score, good price. Glad you like it so far. Yeah, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And it was very well priced. I thought, anyway. I mean, the eight year old is tough to beat considering, like, what is that, like 80, 90 bucks? Mm hmm. Yeah, in, in Ontario, it's like 80, 90 bucks. Elsewhere, I think it's even cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, Cars and Cubes is saying, looks like the Lagavulin is drinking nice and easy, Rob. Honestly, it's it's really nice stuff. I would assume the LCBO gets this. Like, do you think they're going to get it? Uh, they did get the first Nick Offerman bottle. Um, so I would assume they get this one too. I wonder what the price is going to Like, they're usually pretty good with the price of Lagavulin, but the new 12 year old is like 200 bucks at the LCBO. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. It's a little, that's a little steep. I still need, I still really want to try it. Did you see the new 2021 12 year old with the, no. lion, with the lion tin and label on the bottle? It looks really cool. I'm such a tater for a nice looking bottle. You are. Yeah. The, the 25 year old looks incredible. Did you see that? Uh, no, but I've always wanted to try that whiskey. So it's a 20, it's a new 25 year old Lagavulin, uh, that's coming out in 2021. It's part of the, the Lagavulin special, like the Diageo special releases. Yeah. So, so Lagavulin released two, they released the 12 and they released, uh, 25. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that look really cool as well, but that one looks awesome. Did Diageo do anything with Brora this year? Did they do another Brora release or no? I don't think so. I think they did a Klein. I keep seeing a Klein Leash 16 somewhere though. Like I don't know if it's cash strength or it's like 48% or something like that. But oh yeah. Cool. cool. Uh, I think Peabody said that he sent you a e-transfer. So he's in for the giveaway. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Peabody. Where is he? Let's uh, let's highlight that that uh, comment that he made. 
sent e transfer. All right. Cool. He also got it in on one of these bad boys as well. Nice coffee note. And I wonder if that's from the Guinness. Probably is. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You're going to like it, man. I think you're going to like it. Would have been some other like beer finished Scotch whiskeys. There's uh, the Castmates, right? Like the Jameson did one. There's the um, the Glen Fittich. Glen Fittich. I can't believe I just. Glen Fittich um, IPA. Right. Which is actually super sweet. Did you try that one? It's like 47%. It's actually pretty good. I can't remember if I had. I, th I think I did, but I don't remember if I did or not. Okay, so time's up on the on the entering. We are officially going live with a um, okay random generator here. Let's see if I can find one really quickly. All right, I'll throw it in the chat. All the names. What's the? It goes one to eight, right? One to seven. One to eight. One to eight. Uh, yeah, I just threw it in the chat there. All the different names. Yeah, there's eight. P boss is the eighth. Okay, I'm gonna screen share here. I apologize if this like messes everything up, guys, but it shouldn't. <clears throat> I'm usually pretty decent with this stuff. I do it all the damn time. Okay, let's get this to eight, not eight hundred and ten. Okay, so from one to eight, yeah. Yes, one to eight. All right, here we go with sample number one. Ooh, number one. <laughs> All right, so number one got it. So let's eliminate him. Number one was uh, M1977. Yeah. And then number the next one, seven. Who's seven, seven was uh, In Touch Mortgage. In Touch Mortgage. All right. Okay, so in touch mortgages and uh, M nineteen seventy seven. Yeah. So, um, let me just read this guy's name. I hope he. I hope he's still around. Um, I can't, I can't go back that far. Okay, so M1977, if you are still here, hopefully you still are, please email me at whiskey in the six at gmail.com. <laughs> Richard said, good thing I just called. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you could have entered and then lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he did enter. Did, did he? he? I, think I didn't he... write his name down. He didn't. Oh no, he did it. You're right. You're right. He did not. He did not. You're right. It was Richie, not Ri Richard. Sorry. Richie Z was in, but not Richard. Yeah. Right. My bad. <laughs> no getting scammed again. <laughs> so M1977, if you are still in the chat, please email me your address and i will ship you a sample of your choosing um in touch mortgages you also want a sample <laughs> so you can walk over whenever you like because you live like six doors down <laughs> <laughs> clear the third saying this is rigged like he does on everything that he doesn't win <laughs> that, that is claire's actually i don't know who says it more richard or, or uh, claire claire <laughs> Claire does. Yeah, does. Yeah. Well, every time for my Patreon giveaways, when he doesn't win, it's, and then he did win, and then everyone else was like rigged. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Good old Claire. There he goes. Uh, Mamuka, nineteen seventy-seven. So Mamuka, nineteen seventy-seven. If you are still here, please um, send me your your address and I will get you a sample of your choosing. Is he here? B Bmo is uh, still talking to him. You have to play to, yeah, you have to play to win. <laughs> Peter White, mm -hmm. Claire the third. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you didn't even get in there, Claire, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, we are just over an hour, and I have a rule because we've done many that exceed one hour, and they usually at, at the at about like what the hour and a half point. When does it fall off the rails? Like usually about hour and a half. What do you mean? Like when no one clicks on the re air? No, no. I'm saying like when do when do we usually fall off the rails? You and I. <laughs> oh, when do we get? Yeah, uh, it depends. It all depends. I mean, we've had what three and a half hour lives, four hour lives where. Yeah, there was. Yeah, we. I mean, I left a couple of them up there. There's <laughs> yeah, some of them have to get deleted. <laughs> usually, uh, yeah, we have to pull a trendy and C and instantly delete our live after doing it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the delete of the lives that that get inappropriate. Although we managed to go three hours in your debut, uh, in your whisk, in your uh, Sipper Social Club debut, and we we kept that one on. That's still that's getting a lot of traction still. Which one is that? I don't remember. We did the Pappy Twenty Three. We did like George T. Stag. We did like a whole bunch. Oh, of we did it from your place. Yeah, my right. old, my old place. Yeah, we drank really well that night. We had uh, Springbank, 16-year-old local barley. We had everything. Yeah, we had some crazy stuff that night. That was a good That was a good night. That was a really good night. That was almost as good as the night that Richard, who just super chatted 25 bucks, thank you very much, <laughs> um, and said, I missed being scammed. I feel empty inside. <laughs> there you go. But uh, that, that almost as good as the night that Richard sent us those samples. But those samples were probably a trumper. That, we that, still, yeah, we still have great samples from Richard that I've yet to even show oh, you. Yeah, we have oh that plus the the rum ones that we have that we got to do. Yes, yeah, those rums. I really want to try those rums. I've been waiting on you to try those rums. It's not your fault. I'm just saying it. I really want to try those rums. Hey, I'm I'm up for it anytime. Yeah, anytime. Richard, thank you so much for that super chat. Um, Mark, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, thank you for providing the promo code for these lovely gentlemen and perhaps one or two ladies. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So uh, liquorlodge.ca, guys. And then the promo code is, I'll type it in one more time. But just keep in mind that the pr it will not pop up until, um, sorry, the bottles will not be there until uh, June 28th. Okay. So. Just keep that in mind. This is the promo code Sixer Crew, and that's it. I think that's that's it for us. Awesome. Um, appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Fifty-five of you guys stuck around to listen to us uh, jib jab. Pick up the Lagavulin and eleven-year-old offerman, guys. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Nice. Jeremy, thank you for uh, joining tonight. Uh, My pleasure. Before we sign off, I know you talked about the video earlier, but what, what's coming up on uh, Super Social Club? Uh, um, all right. So, yeah, today I released a video reviewing some Glen Alki. Um, the 10-year-old Cash Strength Batch 3, 4, and 5 did it blind, did it over two days, um, re-racked it again just to make sure the results were the same, and they were. So check that out to know which batch I prefer out of those three. And coming up next, it's going to be uh, my top – Five discontinued Scotch whiskeys from years past. Um, which ones I think um, I would love to see um, happen again, and which ones I think are my top uh, ones that have been discontinued. So check that out. Uh, that will be coming out um, Sunday or Monday, probably. Absolutely, um, that's awesome. And we do have a podcast planned, but we just haven't fired it off yet. And um, that'll be happening soon. So, yeah. In that, one, in that one, we will be reviewing the Cragamore 20. Yes. Which is a really good whiskey. Really, really good. Really good whiskey. Really good price. 20 years old. Castring. And Cragamore is uh, probably my favorite release that they've ever done. Yeah, the 12 was awesome last year. The 2019 12-year-old Cragamore Cast Strength was amazing. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're banging out some really good stuff. So uh, I'm really happy with Diageo and this, like, special release Cast Strength, uh, like, only 
it's really cool that they're doing that. <clears throat> yes, they should do that all the time because that's their best stuff for sure. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much for the super chats. We really appreciate it. Um, sorry, if if Mamuka1977 doesn't email, I'll be more than happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Dimo. Um, thank you really Really appreciate you all. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the support. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, we will. We got to do this more often, man. We got. We got. We got to hook these guys up and have some, uh, as Roy would call it, bar fly time. Yeah. For sure. And I think uh, maybe a little outdoor live session could be in order uh, soon. Outdoor Since live we're... session as well as a podcast coming yeah. up very shortly. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys.